The Wine Insiders presents a private tour of Paul Meyer's new Sonoma Coast vineyards and an exclusive tasting of the latest Jason releases with winemaker Aaron Green. Also, stay tuned for details on how you can win a free bottle of each of these rare wines for your collection. We're going to Paul Meyer's new Wayfarer Vineyard, located in the Sonoma Coast Appalachian. First, we drive north through Sonoma County and the Russian River Valley, home to Martinelli and many of my personal favorite Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Then we head west to the Sonoma Coast and some of the most spectacular scenery anywhere in the world, where prized vintners such as Flowers, Peter Michael, William Sellian, and Helen Turley's Marcuson are currently sourcing grapes for their highly sought after collector Pinot Noir. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how you doing, Hal? I'm okay, but my goodness, what a drive. I know, it took you a long time to get out here. <laughs> you can say so. Where, where are we? Well, we're actually at Wayfair Farms, which is Paul Meyer's new Pinot Noir project. Um, our first year of production was in 2005. We started planning in 2000. But it's a funny story. I mean, it took you so long to get out here. But um, Jason's son, Ralph, always calls it Wayfar instead of Wayfair. Well, because I agree it with is, Ralph. You know, we're about 90 miles from Napa, and uh, it can take three to four hours to get out here. Okay, so it's so a long haul. So we're on the Sonoma Coast, right? Yes. And so what's so special about the Sonoma Coast? We have the maritime influence. So we're up on these ridge tops and we get we get nice sun exposure and then the the fog will move in and cool everything off and then it moves out early in the morning. So we get we get grape uh, great ripening grape ripening and complexity. <laughs> Um, as well as the cooling, which retains the acidity and the nice firm structure of the wines we can produce from out here. So Aaron, are these Pinot Noir or Chardonnay vineyards? Actually, we have uh, predominantly Pinot Noir and some Chardonnay out here. Probably 80% Pinot, 20% Chardonnay. And we planted the rootstock in 2000 and then budded over uh, to the, the clones that we wanted to have in, in uh, 2001 and 2002. So uh, we've been anxiously awaiting for these first releases. So This is really exciting. Well, all this talk about Pinot Noir and Chardonnay is making me thirsty. Can we go taste these wines? Yeah, I'd love to show you our wines. All right. Mm. Aaron, that is delicious. What flavors do you taste? I get layers and layers of tropical fruit integrated with oak and a touch of Meyer lemon and a little bit of even lemon cream pie. That is fantastic. Now, how would you compare the Jason Chardonnay to, say, the Paul Meyer Chardonnay? The Jason actually comes around after the barrel selection happens, and I go through and I choose um, the barrels that I want to go into the Paul Meyer. Every barrel vessel is an independent fermentation, so there is a lot of variation between barrels sometimes within lots. And the barrels that um, that I deselect from the Paul Meyer program are then blended together and go into the Jason. Uh, the Jason can also be, if we're doing some experimentation with a new vineyard that we're optimistic, we'll go into the uh, the Paul Meyer. We will um, go ahead and give it a trial run, so to speak, and then if it's not quite up exactly where we want it to be, we, it will also be blended into the Jason. I think Jason Jason Palmeyer describes your, your Palmeyer Chardonnay as industrial strength. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, industrial strength to me means optimum everything. Okay. We've got um, optimum ripeness, therefore optimum maturity, um, optimum conditions for, for, for growing and fermentation, and then the barrel selection, and then optimal blending. Everything at its optimum is industrial strength. Well, I'd say you're, you're coming off the close here. Congratulations on the new vintage. All right, thank you. Next we have our 2005 Jason Pinot Noir. Mm. This is our first bottling ever. This is 20% um, is actually from this property. Okay. And another 80% is actually from the Russian River area. Boy, it smells beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I get a lot of um, red cherry chapstick and red raspberry and um, kind of black creamy cherry cola components. That is sensational. Well done. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of this. Um, this is our first vintage, and um, we worked very hard. I mean, the learning curve for, for Pinot Noir is very steep. So in seven years at Palmyre, this is your first Pinot Noir? Yes. How are the challenges different for a Pinot versus a Cabernet or a Chardonnay? Well, I'd say completely different for me. I mean, I actually have, um, you know, a history working with those other varietals, and it, <clears throat> it comes 
more naturally and more comfortably I kind of have you know the, the the database inside of what I expect at certain points in time in the production and what that wine will become in the bottle and how it'll evolve and how I want to do blending and with Pinot Noir it's all new and exciting the Pinot Noir likes to play you know, like a little hide and seek sometimes sometimes it's more profuse sometimes not it seems to be ever-changing and of course not having the uh, the history of working with it it's it's all a, a new uh, game, an exciting game of trying to um, see how these wines will evolve. And this is a, a, a Cabernet blend, correct? Actually, it's a red blend. This uh, particular wine is uh, actually 60% Merlot. Oh, okay. And uh, probably 37-38% uh, Cabernet, and then a little Petit Verdot Malbec and uh, Cab Franc. Well, I think it's delicious. How would you describe it? Um, a lot of black fruit. I get uh, uh, even blackberry, black cherry, definitely optimum maturity. Uh, some notes of cedar as the oak and vanillins mm. integrate in, and um, a really nice little touch of licorice. I tell you, Aaron, all three wines you've tasted today, to me, have just an extraordinarily smooth and, and, and savory and delicious texture. How do you achieve that texture? You know, I think it's all about the physiological ripeness, which is always under debate for hang time and whatnot. But, okay. but it's, it's a matter of having supple tannins instead of angular green tannins. Mm. So essentially you're waiting for the, uh, the fruit to come to a maturity level where the, these tannins and everything in the skins and the seeds are at the optimum. So your seeds are nutty and brown and are not lending uh, harsh tannin components. But those tannins bode well for long-term aging also, correct? Yes, yes they do. When do you think this wine will peak? I think this wine is tasting really nice now. Um, of course, I believe it has quite a few years left in it also. Um, one of the things I try to do when I'm making the wines and making the blend is making something with these supple tannins and, and this ripeness to be very accessible early, but still have the longevity for people who want to lay it down. So I would give this easily five, five to eight years. Let's face it, Aaron, you're, you're most famous probably for, for your, your Cabernets, your Merlots, your, your red, red wine blends. Um, are you trying to achieve a certain uh, Palmar house palette, would you say, or are you just trying to go for wines that you like, you like personally? Well, it often becomes confusing on whether the house palette, the Palmire, is, 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 you know, it basically is my style at this point. <laughs> I guess after so seven years. So, yes, it makes it very, it makes it fun. I get to go in and, and do blends and, and come out with wines that I really enjoy, I like, and that I think that I have uh, blended in the, the layers that not only have um, strength and longevity, but also are fun to drink and... Um, very serious to drink, too. I just like to have more fun than be serious, I guess. So you must enjoy your homework. <laughs> Actually, yes, I enjoy all my work. <laughs> so. Let's have one more sip. Aaron, thank you so much. This has been a real special treat. Your, your new wines are sensational. Well, I'm glad you came, but I have one more surprise for you. Try this. Okay, what do we have here? We actually have the 2005 Paul Meyer Pinot Noir, oh my goodness. which won't be released until uh, September or so of this year, <laughs> and it's only been bottled for a couple of months, so oh. I thought you might want to uh, have a little preview of that. Well, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us today for our private tour and tasting with Paul Meyer. For details about Paul Meyer's new Jason Chardonnay, Cabernet, and Pinot Noir, log on now to thewineinsiders.com. Plus, sign up to win a free bottle of each of these rare wines for your collection. Again, visit us at thewineinsiders.com.